Hey guys, welcome back to Independence Ranch and welcome to our new shooting channel. Today we're going to review the ATR 100. This is one of the guns that we rent here. It's a basic gun, but we're going to show you some of the pros and cons of the gun. We're going to break the gun down, we're going to modify it a little bit, and we're going to take you along on the journey. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Speedy Dozier out here at Independence Ranch. We're out here today on the range with one of the rental guns. This is a Mossberg 100 ATR. Happens to be chambered in a 270 Winchester. Comes with the scope, as is. This is a stock model. We got the little nice little Mossberg logo there. Got the safety on the side, which as a left-handed shooter isn't the most convenient place, but I can but I can reach over and still push it. The trigger, it, it's similar to an Aki trigger. I can't recall the actual name for this one for the Mossberg model, but it is adjustable, so that's a plus. The scope is a 3x9x40. By by the optics are fairly clear. It adjusts very well. It has good little uh, small Picatinny rails, bases. The scope's mounted, mounted on there, it hasn't adjusted any, hasn't shifted. <clears throat> it's fairly clear, it's not as clear as some of the higher end scopes, but you, you get what you pay for it with a package deal. It's got a molded cheek piece, which I'm left handed, but it doesn't stick out far enough to really bother me. And I can just work the bolt with my right hand shooting off a bench. So even though I'm left handed, it doesn't bother me too bad. By and by, it's a it's a good gun for the beginner, novice, uh, young shooter, even someone who just doesn't want to take their nice three thousand dollar Dakota rifle up, up, out through the rainforest of Washington or Oregon. It's plastic stock, matte finish. It's it's gonna last. Throw a few more through there. It does it does load through the top, and it, uh, you have to unload it through the top. So we're gonna, it holds four, but we're just gonna put three in there. We'll shoot a three round group safety's on Well, we shot our three, our three round group, and we're gonna go down there and take a look and see how we did. All right, well we have our first group. Uh, it's up here on the left side. We'll take a look at it. Our first shot was this top one here. It's roughly an inch high into the right. Our second shot was a little bit lower than that. It was approximately an inch and a half from the bullseye. And our third one kind of wandered a little bit lower. So we're about an inch and a half down and to the right again. So all in all, I'm not terrible. We're all still within the vitals. So we're taking a good heart shot, but it's not what we want. We want to limit that down where the only variable is going to be us. The two things we want to do today, we're going to try to float the barrel and we're going to adjust the trigger. So, we're, first thing we're going to do, which you should always do before you work on any gun, make sure it's unloaded. This one is, so we're good to go. Now, to do both these things, we're going to have to take the stock off. But, because we're just taking the stock off, there's two screws on the bottom we're going to take out. It's not going to do anything with the scope, so it should stay uh, sided in, as long as we don't bump it around too much. Now, <clears throat> floating the barrel refers to, right here on the fore stock, uh, right where it fits in in this channel now if it's touching That that can hinder the the accuracy of your gun because of barrel whip What barrel whip does when you shoot the barrel pops up and back down because because of the projectile going through Now if the four stock is touching it anywhere, it's gonna throw your trajectory off just by a little bit so It may be off by a half an inch at 50 yards. It may be off by four or five inches out at 150 yards 200 yards the further out you get the further off it's going to be so we're going to go ahead and take this off and it's going to be a 530 seconds allen wrench we're going to take these screws off they're right here underneath on the bottom so we're going to take the first one off all right we're going to 
Take the second one off, it's right above the trigger guard, right, right in front of the trigger guard. Now we notice we have a couple places where it's touching, right up here, so we're going to sand that down. So I got both the screws loose, the whole top part just comes right off. We'll deal with that side later. Now, because I know how I am, I'm going to lose these screws. So I have a box, I'm going to put them in. The wrench in there so it's out of the way. So I know it's touching right here along the side and right here. So we're going to sand it down. So all we're going to do is just sand it with some sandpaper, just gradually, gradually sand away little by little. I mean, <clears throat> I don't I don't claim to be the best shot because I know I'm not. But when it comes down to it, when I'm shooting at a deer or a large pig out here on the Independence Ranch, I want to make sure that if I miss, it's because of me and not the gun. Alright, so I'm going to go with a little higher grit to smooth it out a little bit just for looks. <clears throat> now you can do this with uh, plastic, which this is, or some, or uh, Woodstock, either one. Now, the things we're going to be doing today, they're not going to improve the accuracy to the point where you're never going to miss. The goal of all these different modifications is to limit the amount of variables when you're shooting. So this looks pretty good. Looks like it's not touching anywhere right now. When we bolt it back together, uh, we'll be able to tell. We'll do it. Uh, we'll test it. So I think this is good for now. Now the other thing we're gonna do is adjust this trigger. So you get a flat head screwdriver right here <clears throat> on the front of the trigger. And there's a flat head screw. So we're gonna tighten it down to the right, clock in the clockwise motion, and we're gonna do it until this screw is flush. That's as far as you want to adjust it, according to the manufacturer. You should not adjust it any further than that, or you can really do some damage. So you want to be very careful not to go past flush on, with that trigger block. Go a little bit more. All right. All right, so we got flush. That's going to make it a little bit crisper. So what we can do right now, you feel it. I like that a little better. Not a whole lot of difference, but it is noticeable. What is neat, however, on these triggers, the safety feature on them, this right here, it works as a set where if the trigger is bumped without pushing that middle lever, it just locks down and it won't shoot. So you work the bolt again, and then it works just fine. Now, <clears throat> the lighter trigger, there's less of a chance of you pulling to the side when you shoot. So. We got that adjusted and we have what we hope is the barrel floated. So we're going to go ahead and put it back together. So this recoil lug is going to fit right in here in this channel. Put the spring in. Make sure that recoil lug is where it, where it goes. It's all going to line up, pop right back in. <clears throat> now these screws, we'll do the shorter one. The shorter one is for the front and the longer one is, is the back screw. So we're going to go ahead and get it in. You don't want to over tighten, but you don't want to keep, have it loose. You don't want it to back out or have any issues down the road. So, we got that one on hand tight. So the longer screw goes in the back. All right, got that one one more time. All right, and get a piece of paper. Now, the test, you can use a dollar bill, you can use a piece of paper, it doesn't really matter. You, your goal is to have this this piece of paper go slide all the way down the barrel, between the barrel and the stock, all the way back 
to the lug. That's all it takes is that little bit of motion and it's almost it's not noticeable about to the human eye, the barrel wick, but it can affect it. So we have it all put back together. Everything's nice and tight. Bolt works well, safety works, trigger's working. So we'll take it back out to the range and we'll see what we can do. Alright. So we're gonna go ahead and load them up. He's on. All right. All right. Well, we shot our three our three round group and. We're gonna go down there and take a look and see how we did. All right, now we did a whole lot better on this second group. We're looking at, instead of a two and a half inch group, we're down to a little bit under an inch and a half, closer to an inch and a quarter. Uh, our first shot was about an inch down and to the right. Our second shot was slightly below that. Uh, we're about an inch and a half down, slightly to the right. And our third shot is a little bit to the right from that, so we're, we're about two, two and a half inches down to the right of the bullseye. It's a whole lot tighter. I think we've narrowed it down where it's just the ability of myself as a shooter instead of the limits of the gun, which is what our ultimate goal was. So we're going to practice a little bit more, and then hopefully the next time you see me, it'll be on a hunt, trying to shoot a pig. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time out here on the Independence Ranch.